So antennas. Antennas are probably the most important part of making a wireless connection, definitely for long distance links. An antenna is a passive element that brings the signal from a wire into free space and back again. That's important to be aware of. It's not an amplifier. It doesn't actively amplify a signal. It only squeezes the signal into a given direction. And the more it does that, the stronger we say the antenna is. But it's only strong for a particular direction. It doesn't add overall power to the signal. It directs the signal in one direction and it's therefore weaker in other directions. In that sense, it's not an amplifier, it's only focusing power. Here's a principal view of what an antenna might look like. Here it's a two-wire element in that wire charges, electrons can be moving, they can react to the field that hits them, they will try to dance along, you could say, they will move in, in the same frequency as the electromagnetic wave, the radio wave that's hitting it. And if the length, if the dimensions are well fitting, then this will be in good resonance and be able to absorb or emit this frequency in a very efficient manner. That in principle is what an antenna does. As a side comment, you can also see here, radio waves, electromagnetic waves have something which we largely neglect here. They have a direction, they have a polarization. This one here oscillates in the horizontal plane not in a vertical. And we, we could go into much detail here, we won't have the time for it, but keep in mind when working with antennas, polarization direction is important. The general antenna properties, what we're typically most interested in is the directivity, like how does it focus power into one direction? How Narrow is the beam, we're talking of the beam width. Is it symmetrical to all directions or only in one direction? Do we have something that goes backwards? Talking about the front to back ratios. So directivity, directionality is the first thing we're interested in. I mentioned polarization. Obviously, we have to think of the frequency and the space in frequency around that center frequency, the bandwidth of this antenna. The physical sizes, like can we even deploy such an antenna? And lastly, impedance, which is the resistance of an oscillating wave. We know a resistor for DC direct current, likewise alternating currents, ACs, oscillating fields moving in a wire, a connector antenna. They have a certain impedance and that needs to match. If it doesn't match between the elements, you get reflections between the different elements. So impedance has to match something you can look up in the data sheets of connectors, antennas, and so far. If it doesn't, it's like sticking two water pipes together, one with a small radius, the other with a big one. And then if you pump water through that from the big one into the small one, well, it doesn't travel nicely, you get reflections. That's what we want to avoid. Therefore, we match impedance. The radiation patterns, and we'll be seeing quite a few of these, are probably the most important part of what we're looking at. It's describing the direction that the antenna is focusing the power in. We typically show these as polar diagrams, like 
showing the angles both looking from above onto a horizontal plane and from the side looking at the elevation, the up and down. That's the typical two views that you see if we're looking at antenna radiation patterns. So, and those can be very, very different. What's happening in the horizontal plane and in a vertical direction can be and will be very different from one another. And to complicate things further, it could be different and will be different for different polarizations. So radiation patterns get quite complicated if you look into detail. Most of the time we don't need them that detailed, but in certain cases, yes, we have to look into all the details. The beam width I mentioned earlier, uh, quickly on how do we actually measure this, how do we define this, we say it's that direction where the power has fallen from zero dB, that's the strongest, that's the direction it goes into, to minus three, half the power. So that's how we define beam width. It's the direction where the edge of the beam, we still have half the power compared to the absolute maximum.